So I'm asked to talk, but I have to do it very short, I see, about uh, the ecological, biological background of biocorrosion. So let's start immediately. I'm a biologist, by the way. What is accelerated low water corrosion? Uh, and what is the impact on uh, sheep piles, for example? Well, I had the opportunity in a cooperation project with a private company to go submerged in dry conditions and look in details at the wall, and that's very important. And I try to summarize uh, what we see on the water. It's so that uh, in general, looking at the literature, the impact of uh, work of biologists on uh, microbial influenced corrosion is indeed, as we see here, mostly limited to the uh, microbiology. But after all, there is much more like you see and you know, there is a complete, complex living community on the substrate, and it's not only uh, microorganisms, but also macroorganisms. I will deal with that a little bit later on. And it's also more than low water. Don't forget, and there are not so much older people uh, from my age, but the situation today is completely different with 20 years ago. Now, our waters, as well as fresh waters, as in estuaries, are much less polluted. So the bio biodiversity of all species has increased. And you can't compare the situation today with that from 20 years ago. This is fouling too, yeah? Um, by definition, you have oysters and mussels, etc., etc. So monsters compared to uh, your microorganisms. Um, let look, let's look what's happening, uh, very schematic, in the transect, water level on top, uh, the sediment on the bottom, on the right, white, is the water color. To the left, you have the substrate. And like we have heard many times this morning, green is our biofilm. So in that biofilm are happening a lot of things. And you are the experts. So I summarize the metabolic activity on one side, is oxygen consumption. And on the other side, you have metabolic end products. Fouling. Microfouling, don't forget not only bacteria, but also algae, protists, fungi, etc., etc., and as I said, our macrofouling. I have added this here very schematic as a, a kind of a simple muscle collection. And then we have something very strange. When we switch the substrate from rock to iron, biologists don't like it and they are no more interested. And on the other side, engineers don't see biofouling. So there is a kind of no man's land. And as an ecologist, I'm always strange looking at uh, workshops and symposia, etc., uh, dealing with this topic. I feel some, somewhat lonely. Looking in detail, as you know, between the substrate and the biofilm, on the bottom of the biofilm, you have a complex layer, an outer orange layer, intermediate black, and on uh, the um, in contact with uh, the iron, it is uh, somewhat greenish. Here, you have a photograph of that situation, as you can see from orange 
for the magnetite, so it's really black, to your metal. But I want to say something more about microfiber. As an example, I give a muscle with this vicious threads, and in between, there is an ideal world for small animals, for example, worms, crustaceans, etc. All types of little crawly things, and they are growing and multiplying as a result from top to bottom, you have consumption of oxygen. The depletion can be complete in such a way that you are there in an anaerobic situation, an anoxic environment, and that's a paradise, of course, for our sulfate-reducing bacteria, and that's common stuff for you. But it's so that even in aerated situations, all over the biofilm, you have conditions even for anaerobic bacteria. Don't forget that. Now, this macrofauna is growing, becoming more complex, and simply by mechanical removal whatsoever, they are falling out. Because the adhesion to the substrate is very light. This gives when the flakes rip, rip off, clusters of growing, falling, a dynamic succession, resulting in a patchy distribution like, I hope, no, a little bit further. You can see here on our first photograph, this is a sheet pile, and you have differential aeration, of course, here on these uh, deludated surfaces in comparison with uh, the very packed uh, biocommunity. It gives a very strange type of pitting. Uh, here on your substrate, substrate in such a platform, an anode cathode platform, they are flourishing sulfate reducing bacteria, so lithotrophic, and moreover, as a result of chemical reactions, I don't go in detail of course, you have the production of iron sulfide. Iron sulfide here represented by that black line. Important here now is first demonstration of the consumption of iron by the sulfate reducing uh, bacteria community and it's very nice seeing on your sheet pile uh, after handling that uh, these flakes are imprinted on the substrate. This autocatalytic pitting associated with this, what's called tuberculation, has as a result a thick magnetite layer, layer. and important this is that it's electrically, electrical conductive. So if people want to use cathodic protection whatsoever, the conductivity is going over your anaerobic community. It's a very strange effect. As an example, this is a transect through such a tubercle. Sheet pile transect, eight millimeters, here four millimeter. And when we look in detail here, these are business threads from such a muscle. So it means that that layer from almost one centimeter is produced in one growing season. This is another one. You have, in other words, a reduction of your sheet pile in no much more than three years. And it's very heterogenic. 
when we are talking about lithotrophic corrosive bacteria, as usual, it's not only chemical mix, but recently we now also, from literature, I do nothing else than literature, you have also electrical mix. It means that you have a direct electron uptake from your substrate by your bacteria, and that's named electrotrophy. Okay, so as, as autotrophy, heterotrophy, electrotrophy. That's a scanned photograph from that paper to bacteria with nanowires for collection and consumption of electrons. So it means that your iron is going, is disappearing, of course, in the splash zone, tidal zone, not only and most of all in the accelerated low water corrosion zone, but deeper on too, and very heterogenic according to the composition of your bio-community. So don't forget that metallic iron is something very recent in our evolutionary history. In nature, you find only oxides. And we use a lot of energy to reduce these iron oxides to uh, metal iron. So all these organisms are very happy to have that food resource. And Moreover, it's a hidden process under black crusts. You don't find it everywhere in the same amount. Steel in an aquatic environment as such is a misapplication when it is not protected. Look at these cars. Maybe you have a car too. My car is painted. I hope your car too. So that's only in the air, but submerged, even in marine conditions, without any coating whatsoever, very strange, at least for me as a biologist. So maybe engineers are very clever people, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use any word. <laughs> but indeed, there is a general lack of awareness Our conclusions, because I have to go in a good time, we are all hungry. This is a photograph under a microscope. You have here your iron. This is a good coating. Uh, Mrs. Prent will say a little bit more about that, I guess, this afternoon. Okay. Same for me, a good coating, <laughs> and on the other side, a biofilm. So what is done here is a complete isolation of the bio-community flourishing, and your iron, who stays in good condition, in this case, 23 years. Second, you have to think about life cycle management. It's better to spend more money initially at the beginning and less on maintaining, score, maintaining costs, of course, in the future afterwards. And as we have seen, cathodic prote protection is problematic once you have to, do, to deal with iron sulfate, sulfide. So I hope I was uh, quick enough now to, to come in order. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention.